And, and this passage, it is a curious one for today that would be uh, Christ the King. Um, we didn't used to celebrate Christ the King up until the 1940s when the Pope at the time said we should have this Sunday, the last Sunday in the church's calendar, uh, because next week will be the, the start of a new church year with the first Sunday in Advent. And the Pope said we should have this Sunday to celebrate Christ the King. The interesting thing about that, theologically poignant thing, is that it was the 1940s, you know, right at the the end of the First World War and probably, arguably, one of the darkest times in, in history. And the church stands up and says, we're going to celebrate that Christ reigns. In the, in the midst of that context of world war that had threatened uh, everything they knew to be, they wanted to stand up and celebrate that Christ's reign was coming. A powerful message. And so we have this passage today. Now, I've met people who are so faithful uh, in, in Christ and in his promise of paradise that they look forward to dying. Have you met people like that? It's often quite uh, affronting when somebody is perhaps getting older and tired, uh, and you know, you get into a conversation that is about, well, you know, we can't can't live forever, sort of a thing. And their response uh, almost is, is jarring because it's like, well, I can't wait to be with Christ when you know when I die. I'm just looking forward to that day. Have you ever heard somebody like that? I know I've met them, but maybe that's just part of my profession, but. Even as a faithful minister, I find that surprising uh, and somewhat disturbing. Uh, but uh, in, in a good way, you know, in a good way. It makes me think, oh, well, you know, I'm not looking forward to dying. So, you know, um, but uh, in a sense, we have this mix where we have Jesus here and now, but we look for paradise. Uh, to come. Uh, some of us, more than others, days, uh, you know, maybe more so this day than another day, uh, depending on how we're going, how hopeful and faithful we are and how we're eager we are for the fullness of paradise to come, you know, though we have a taste of that now. When people say that, it's only because they're living with Christ today that they're looking forward to, you know, paradise in the future, when they're genuinely hopeful, when they're genuinely looking forward to dying and being with Christ, they can only do that because they're living with Christ today. Does that make sense? Uh, it's not just because they've put it off and they've lived their life saying, oh, well, one day I'm going to be with Christ, one day I'll be in paradise. They've actually uh, lived a little bit of it, probably for many years, in order to be that hopeful and that faithful. And in many ways, that is the great hope of Easter, of the Easter faith, that one day Jesus will reign fully in this world. Uh, that God's light would fully come in ways that uh, we only have an inkling of now. And so we look forward to that time. We look forward to Jesus coming, that his reign with hope. But here's the thing. If our hope in paradise, if our hope in heaven of being with Jesus is purely in the future there's sort of a, a, a way where that means that we don't have to worry about it today. We've almost put it all off. We've put heaven off uh, and, and it doesn't have an impact on how we live our lives today. It can stay at that level of speculation about the future. One day, one day, 
you know, we'll be with Jesus. One day heaven will come. And it means we don't have to take responsibility for whether we're living in it here and now. For making heaven reality. Some people can get into thinking that the goal of Christian faith is that, well, if I live this Christian life and if I uh, live believing in Jesus, then when I die, I'll go to heaven. I'm sure you've heard that. People saying, well, you know, the, the goal of Christian faith is that I've lived this good, faithful life and when I die, I'll go to heaven. John Wesley uh, ripped into people like that. was quite... Uh, upset with the people of his day, his congregations, the people he preached to, that had that notion. It was strong. <coughs> I'll live this Christian life, I'll go to church, I'll believe in Jesus, and that when I die, I go to heaven. He said, no, the goal of Christian faith is actually about serving Christ here and now. The goal of Christian faith is, is not you know, way off in the distance. The goal of Christian faith, he said, was serving Christ here and now. Now, I'd want to add that it's about worshipping God. We were, we were made to worship God. And that's a here and now thing. It's not a future hope. It's not something that we can put off for a later date. Jesus, hanging on a cross, has... No one to preach to except for a criminal. Everybody else is uh, slurring him and throwing insults. But one person is open, one person is receptive, and he says to Jesus, this criminal beside him, says, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Had you ever noticed that there's something really bizarre about that? Two men dying on a cross and one turns to the other and says, remember me when you come into your kingdom. The man's about to die. Yet this criminal says, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Isn't that actually an amazing statement of faith? This criminal sees the person alongside him, though he's physically going to die, the criminal realises he has a kingdom that is important and he wants to be a part of it. And it's clearly not a kingdom of, oh, I'm going to free myself from this cross and I'm going to uh, you know, rally a, uh, an army of supporters. And <coughs> the man on the cross knows none of that's going to happen. So he has faith in a different kind of kingdom. He must look at Jesus and somehow know much more is at work than just this man who said he would be a king in the literal sense, in the earthly sense. And surely the criminal is thinking of a future kingdom. Now, I guess because of my background and growing up in churches and people saying around me, well, if I live a good life, if I believe in Jesus, when I die... I'll go to heaven. I've always heard the criminal thinking like that. You know, saying, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And I've laid over that, this notion, this, this thinking that, well, what he's really talking about is when the two of them are dead, that Jesus would have this heavenly kingdom and the man wants, wants in. But... Here's Jesus' promise. This is the really startling bit. Jesus' promise to him is, I tell you surely this, that today you will be with me in paradise. Now, I'll let you into a little secret. Jesus is not referring to when we're both dead. When we both take our last breath, then we'll enter into this heaven that is promised for, you know, you'll have to wait for it.
what's hoped for for the future, this future heaven, Jesus makes real here and now. It's not a someday after I've gone and, and all of this is put right. Someday when my followers have gathered together and converted uh, rulers and kings and the world has become uh, Christian, then you'll be... No, it's not looking down the track in the future at all. Jesus says, today you will be with me in paradise. Now here's a definition for you. Whenever and wherever you're with Jesus, you're in paradise. Paradise is whenever and wherever you're with Jesus. Does that sound fair? That if uh, you're with Jesus in your home or at your church or in your car or at your work, if you have a, a quiet moment and you connect with Jesus genuinely, that's a foretaste of paradise. Does that make sense? And so when Jesus says to this man, today you'll be with me in paradise, it's already true. He's already with Jesus. He's already knowing or starting to know the acceptance of being welcomed in of being loved, that his sins that he's paying for right then and there are actually covered. They're actually washed away and in a sense, you know, dealt with. Jesus is saying, you are with me here and now and I accept you as one of my own. And that is paradise. That is heaven. And the man on the cross knows it then and there, today. Not after he's taken his last breath, but before. Before. And our relationship here and now is not just preparation for paradise, but it's participation in paradise, here and now, this day. The dying thief didn't begin to be with Jesus after his last breath, did he? He didn't have to wait till he was dead to be with Jesus, to be accepted by Christ, but rather it started right then and there in that promise. And he recognised it. He recognised the person next to him was not just a, a king who was looking to raise an army, but he was sovereign. He was master of this man's life. He was the king of a heavenly realm. And he was sent by God. Not just the king of the Jews, but the king even of thieves. So what relevance does this have to you here and now? Well, this conversation that those two have is a wonderful reminder that even in the worst of times, even in our worst of times, it's possible to be with Jesus. So if our life seems tough, or we're going through difficult days, I'm pretty confident it's not going to get as bad as this man on a cross. Yet he was able to be with Jesus there in that moment. And that makes me think that all of us, no matter what we go through, can be with Jesus here and now. And that that can make a difference to our perception, to our life, to our future. Our God is not high and mighty, sitting up on the clouds. He's not aloof and separated from our pain and our struggles, and the, the ordinariness, the difficulty of this life. But Jesus is right in the midst of it. God doesn't just hang out with righteous people, but God gets mixed up in the mess of life, here on earth, even to the point of going with criminals to the cross. 
So I want to assure you that the good news is Jesus' words for us. I assure you that today you will be with me in paradise. It's not a distant promise for the future. It's Christ here for you now. So pay attention in your dark moments, in those difficult days. Pay attention because when you're in those places, that is when Christ is right alongside you. Amen. Loving Lord God, we thank you that your kingdom is for people like us, for criminals and broken lives, people who are lost, people who are struggling, people who are looking for meaning and purpose and peace. Your kingdom is for us. And you would go even to a cross to hang out with us. That we might know the acceptance and love you have for us. Praise be to God. Amen. Let's